The reviews for this episode are in. Critics are saying, Complete it. Hello, Internet! Welcome to Game Theory. Hey, that's my line, and you're not even doing it right. The cadence is all off. Hello, Internet! Welcome to Bear Theory! And I'm the only disembodied voice on this show. That's Greg. That's kind of his gig on our channel. And the bear thing? It's kind of a running joke. Fine, so who are you and what do you want? My name is Gerard Dragon Rider Khalil, also known as the Beardman, or as most people know me as, the Completionist. And I'm Greg, also known as the Mediocreist because I'm mediocre at most things. Every week, Greg and I beat a brand new game to completion. Every last item, every achievement, every trophy. But lately, I've been starting to wonder, why do I do it? Why do I have to fully complete a new game each and every week? Well, it is the main premise of your show. Oh hey, Captain Obvious! Thank you so much! Captain Obvious, he's our hero! Gonna tell you what you already know. Does this guy have an off switch? He gets excited when he meets new people. I was just trying to make a good first impression. Oh. Oh, I, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to hurt your feelings. I think you're a perfectly pleasant person. You like me! You really like me! Greg, can we get back to my question, please? Alright, anyways, since you're like the spark notes of gaming, I thought you'd be the best person to ask. Why are some people born completionists? Well, to answer your question, let me ask you a question. Why do you play games? Well, I don't know, they're fun. I grew up playing them. Oh, baby Beardman. So cute and so hairy. And because they're great to play with friends. Do you play video games because you're good at them? Sure. I, I guess they wouldn't be as fun if I sucked. And let me guess, you like to be challenged, don't you? Well, of course. Well, my dear Dragon Rider, you just described the upper levels of Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Greg, if you'll be our Dick Clark. I'll be any kind of dick you need. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Maslow's $100,671 pyramid. We, we had to account for inflation. Basically, in 1943, a famous psychologist named Abraham Maslow created his version of the food pyramid. But instead of grains and dairy, he covered everything humans need to survive, from the basics of air and shelter to more obscure things like love and self-esteem. Video games, slightly less important than air. Right. Lower levels of the pyramid are all the basic needs. Food, water, a home. But on the upper levels is where it gets interesting. So, since we're all gamers here, I've devised a little game to find out what what they are. Matt Pat, you're going to give Gerard words or phrases related to a level of the pyramid. Gerard, it's your job to figure out what category Matt Pat is describing. Ready? Your time starts now. To have fun with friends. To be part of something bigger than yourself. Uh, I have no idea. To share a study group with Joe McHale, Chevy Chase, and a hot nerd girl. Community? Correct! Remember when you said you like playing games with friends? People need people. We need to belong. And whether you're a completionist or a casual gamer, playing video games helps you bond with others. So, I'm a completionist because I like co-op. That's just one reason you play. Next level, I feel good about myself. I'm so confident. I can do anything. Things people with high self-esteem say. You're almost there. You also play because you're good at games. It makes you feel good to be on top of a leaderboard or to see your gamer score go up. Am I right? Definitely. And that's the next level of the pyramid, esteem. Playing video games makes you feel good about yourself. You gain ranks and status. It's even in your channel name, Gerard. You're not just any gamer. You're that one video gamer. It gives you a clear sense of identity. Enough talky-talky. Time's almost up. Next level! To maximize your potential. To master a skill. To become the best you can be. Reasons to join the army? Ooh, I'm sorry, but you're out of time. We were looking for self-actualization. Self-actualization, Gerard. How could I have ever gotten that? Well, technically it's called self-actualization, but what it really means is that you aren't content just being any gamer. You want to be the best gamer. Gaming is a skill, and you want to be the master of that skill. You thrive on facing new challenges and crushing them. It's about the constant quest to get better. This is what matters to a completionist the most. So that's our
our game. Thanks for playing. Although you won't be going home with a grand prize for being such a great contestant, you'll be going home with a used sock and a half-eaten Charleston Jew. You're like a character in an RPG. You won't be happy until you reach max stats. Gerard, master of the Keyblade. But that's just one part of your story, Gerard. Something else we have to look at is not just your motivation to play, but the rewards you get that keep you playing. And for that, we need to bust out some neuroscience up in this his house! What what? Is he seriously raising the roof for neuroscience? People call me the crazy one. So you know in modern games you unlock achievements. Well, each time that notification appears in the bottom of your screen, you get a shot of dopamine in the brain. Sounds deliciously painful. Actually, it's pleasurable. Ah, so the Beardman's a masochist, eh? No. Dopamine is an important neurotransmitter in the brain that gets released as a reward mechanism. It also gets released when you eat good food. Then Beardman's getting doped up all the time. He's a dope head. Or have sex. Yeah, I got nothing. Come <clears throat> on, N not to be rude, but can can we stop talking about the Dragon Rider sex life, please? Okay, thanks, bye, appreciate it a lot, thanks. I don't know, sounds to me like nobody's been riding that dragon lately. Oh, snap! Snap-tastic! snap crackle pop -tastic. Anyway, those pop-up rewards keep you coming back, or in this case, playing. It's the same reason people get addicted to drugs. Using drugs releases dopamine. Drug addicts get hooked on the release of dopamine in their brain. So you're saying that I'm addicted to the sense of achievement I get when I play a game. Exactly. You're basically an addict and your drug of choice is achievement. You might as well face it, he's addicted to dopamine. And not all achievements are the same either. Sure, you get a little rush when you get one at the end of a level, when you would expect one to pop up, but you get more of a release when you're not expecting it. Like the, congratulations, you just killed your 53,595th infected achievement. Achievement. You don't know it's coming, so when it pops up, your brain has a big bath of dopamine. Those surprise achievements are the ones that are most effective at keeping you playing. Correct me if I'm wrong, but wouldn't that mean that when I get to the end of the game, I'm getting less of a rush because I know a reward is coming? Well, yes. So on one hand, you're getting that dopamine reward rush for each achievement you get, which keeps you playing and striving for more and more gamer points. But your desire to actually complete the game with everything involves some pretty cutting-edge research. Ah, you hear that, Beardman? You're hip. You're a hipster. Put on those fake glasses and break out the Pabst Blue Ribbon. Start taking pictures of your food and making it look all old-timey. Your need to be a completionist is actually a form of conceptual consumption. Basically, it's a new theory that says that some people consume ideas and information like they do physical things like food. You're the Kirby of game reviewers! Quiet, Greg, I'm trying to learn. Actually, your mildly irritating friend has a point. You are like Kirby. Basically, conceptual consumption theory says that you suck in a bunch of experiences so that you can possess them, own them. The rarer the experience, the more valuable it is. So for you, Gerard, you complete games. Each time you do, you are, in essence, putting them on an invisible trophy wall. Well, no, actually, not invisible. Your channel is your trophy wall, showing off all the experiences and accomplishments you've reached. And think about it, each video influences the next. You've assimilated parts of them into the show. Everything from laser clowns to, of course, bears. Bears! And it's not just your show. Just like Kirby keeps a piece of the enemies he absorbs, you, to some extent, have assimilated the games you've completed into a part of who you are. You know the saying, you are what you eat? Well, to us gamers, we are what we play. We experience all those individual fantasy worlds. Sure, it's through an avatar on the screen, but I was there too, experiencing everything along the way. I still remember the first time I met Pokey in Earthbound, and I'm sure you can remember your first time on Mumbo's Mountain. I was floored when I first defeated Earthbound's Gygus, just as I'm sure you were at the end of Banjo-Kazooie with Gruntilda. We experienced those victories. We own them, and yes, to some extent, it influences who we are. Sure, hundreds of thousands of millions of people play these games, but the experience experiences we have on the quest is uniquely our own. And that, my dear theorists, is why we're gamers and why you, Gerard, are a completionist. That... that was beautiful, Matt. Thank you. Poetic. But there you have it. 
My diagnosis for a completionist. You play because your friends play, you feel good when you play, and you want to be the best player possible. You keep playing because you're a non-sexed achievement addict. And I play to complete because I can add another unique experience to my life resume. That's what I think at least. But hey, that's just a theory. A, a game, game theory. theory. A game theory, I get it. Now enough about you, let's go play some games. Metroid Prime sound good to you? Absolutely. You know, I've always wondered how she fits into that ball of hers. Next episode? Next episode. Next time on Game Theory, Metroid. Or how I learn to stop worrying and cram myself into a tiny metal ball. But for now, check out our group review of Metroid Prime over on their main channel. Click here for more awesome action from this sexy threesome. Admit it, Matt. You're attracted to me, aren't you? Let's continue this conversation over on our channel while we play Metroid Prime.